Okay, so now I want to create some radial sections. So I've created my geo set, and here's my part. What I want to do is I want to create some sections radial to this wonderful little cutout or depression in the armrest. So I get a full effect of what's going on here. In the real world, you're going to have to sometimes create uh, bunched up sections and areas because you, you know a lot of times when you get into areas that are transitioning or going from one step to the next step you need a lot more detail and this is where this type of thing comes in handy so that being said first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the properties of this I'm going to turn off the pickable it's still pickable in the tree but not out here and there's reason behind that and you'll see that in a second after that I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my plane, privilege plane is my ZX plane. And with that I'm going to draw some curves, some 3D curves. And the reason why I wanted to turn that off is, is because if I start picking out in space just randomly like that, what's going to happen is it's going to pick the mesh and I don't want to pick the mesh. I want this to fall on my plane. Eventually I'm going to project these down to this STL. So I've drawn in my curves and as you can see I've gotten pretty close to what I need. In fact, I'm going to leave it. Now, if you have a hard time seeing that, I'm going to go into the properties of this. Go into curves. Make these a little bit thicker and different color. And there you go. If you're having a hard time making out as well what the STL is doing, you can use this lighting effect to change the angle of the light, the position of the light. You can also increase how many lights you have projecting onto the surface. So you can see I can wash it out or I can rotate this out, do whatever you want. And this allows me to you know, make sure I'm visualizing this part correctly. There we go. That right, right there is good. I can really get a good feel for what's going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw on my next curve. Go like this. Tweak it. And that's good. Now that I have that in there, the next thing I need to do is I need to create this curve in here. And I'm going to use 3D curve once again. So for this, I'm just going to pick 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to right mouse click on this and say curvature, curvature, and I can drag this out. Now that I have my curvature imposed, I can tweak these control points to get this close to what I need. And, and what's nice about this technique is, is eventually I may actually use these curves later on to create my surfaces as I see fit. Select OK. And for that, you know, once I zoomed up, up in this area, I can see uh, maybe I want to bring this down a little bit and, and tweak these a little bit. And using these 3D curves gives me those options. There we go. And drag this up, and there we are. And just like that, I've got my curves. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to take these curves and I want to project them down onto the surface. So I'll pick curve, 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 or not surface, STL. Here I have projection and oh, let me pick them again pick my STL now I remember I turned off the pickability of this so I need to pick it out of the tree and what direction for me it's going to be the Y component just right mouse click in there say Y and if you want curve creation you can do that and in this case I'll say sure why not select apply there's my projections everything looks good and OK. Now that I have those curves onto that mesh, what I want you to notice is, as I zoom up, you'll see that there's some deflection. OK, this isn't per perfectly clean. And the reason behind that is, is when I projected those curves, let me undo that. I'm going to redo that again. Projection, pick this. 
this, this, and that. Go to Y component and apply. What ends up happening is I have smoothing turned on. And with the smoothing, I'm saying, okay, I want to deviate so much. And I have an interpolation which will do an exact or precise projection. But with the smoothing, you can see it's deviated. If you don't want any deviation, just turn that on. Hit your apply, and you'll notice that it's now perfect and tight on that mesh. And select OK. And there are my curves. So just be cautious. As a note, be cautious as to what you're doing, where you're doing it, and how you're doing it and such. Now that I have that on there, what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and clean this and this up and I want to do my um, radial sections. So um, for this, actually you know what, I'll just leave them long. Let me go ahead and hide these. I'll go back into my planar sections and then select my STL. Now you'll notice by default it wants to run through this area. What I can do is I can come down here and say flip to planes perpendicular to curve. Which curve do I want? I can pick this curve and what's going to happen is as you can see it's putting in a million, actually 51 sections and each one of them is 11.586 mils off. Now if that's a bit much for you, you can just turn off infinite you can drag this to where you want on that curve. Say I'll start over here. And you can say maybe every 25 mils. Select apply and OK. And I'll do the same thing for pick this guide curve, this curve. I want to. to We'll go infinite. As you can see, that's quite a bit. And what's my step? I'll just go every 10. All right, so now I'm going every 10 millimeters along that curve. And hit my apply, hit my OK. So it does get a little busy, but now you have those curves. And then you can do the same thing for this curve as you see fit. But that's how you would go through and create radial planes along a curve. Now there are other methods that you can use, right? You can you can do uh, radial planes uh, on the curves that I had drawn out on the plane over here, right? Curve 1, curve 2, curve 3. I could have aligned it to them as well. So it's up to you to decide what's right, what's wrong. This is a great tool to use, especially when you start getting into um, funky corners and you have a lot going on in certain areas. So um, this is one way, another way that you can set up good, clean, easy references to go back and, and use for surfacing or analysis purposes.